the CZ82 and 83. Let's check them out. In 1982, the CZ-82 was designed, and in 1983, it went into service with the Czech military, and still serves with the Czech military today. It was designed in 9x18 Makarov, which is a pretty hot little round in between 9mm and 380. But it wasn't long after that they came out with the 380 version with the model 83. This is also in 32 ACP, 380, and they make these in 9x18 Makarov as well. It's a double single action pistol, has a double stack magazine. It replaced the CZ-52 in 7.62 by 25 Takarov. Uh, this is a single stack, much larger pistol, single action. And so it was a real upgrade with the CZ-82. We're gonna review the CZ-82 and we're gonna compare it to the CZ-83. And we really appreciate AIM Surplus for sending these for this test and evaluation. They can be kind of hard to get. I've had these for a while, but I really wanted to do the review and we appreciate AIM Surplus. Now when CZ came out with the Model 82, it was in 1982. And it was in production up until 1992, but it still is in service with the Czech military, whether with Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic. It's 9x18 Makarov, and that's a hot little round. I mean, it's kind of in between 9 and 380 ACP. Uh, when it comes to the Model 83, this is actually a commercial version of the 82. All the dimensions are the same. Again, the magazines fit. This did come in 9x18 Makarov, but also 380 ACP and 32 ACP. Let's go ahead and check to make sure that the guns are unloaded. We're gonna drop our magazines, check the chamber. and they're empty. But when it comes to magazine capacity, there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, first off is the magazines are compatible either way. You can use the 82 magazine and the 83 vice versa. Uh, when it comes to the 380 ACP, you can get 13 plus one in the magazine. With the Makarov, you get 12 plus one. With the 32 ACP, you can get 15 plus one. Now one big advantage of the Model 82 is it's now considered a Curio and Relic. CNR license guys can order these and so it gives you a little bit of a break. Uh, since the Model 83 was not discontinued until 2012, it doesn't fall under the CNR rules. And they are doing some limited productions as well according to the CZ website. But the biggest difference between these two pistols is the barrel. Uh, with the Model 82, it's a chrome line barrel with polygonal grooves. So that gives it a difference compared to the lands and grooves that are in the commercial model. Now the Model 82 typically does come with a lanyard loop. Um, you can find some that don't. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same. Uh, they have the dark plastic black grips. Uh, has this really nice little tang beaver tail that comes up very low bore axis. I mean, it is really nice. And three dot sights that are windage adjustable. Of course, you have your exposed hammer because these are double single action. A nice enlarged trigger guard, very thin at the front, very pointable. Serrations on the slide, they're somewhat minimal, but they're fairly easy to grab. Now, one of the big pluses for the 82 is it was the first issued handgun that was ambidextrous mag release, you can see it's on both sides, and ambidextrous frame safeties. And they have really nice bluing. Uh, when you get these, I mean, now these are surplus, both of them. In fact, the Model 83 has a lot more wear than the Model 82. But of course, some guns were carried a lot and shot little. This one looks like it might've had a little bit of both. 
And we have our slide stop right here at the back, locks into place. One thing that I do like about this pistol is that it doesn't have a magazine disconnect. Now because the pistols are the same, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Model 52. And this is the CZ-52, which was replaced by the CZ-82. Uh, you can see that they are considerably different in size. We have a single stack magazine. We have a single action pistol. It's large. It's heavy. Uh, but this is in the 7.62 by 25 Takarov, which is a really hot round. And these have really been sought after for a long time. They are kind of ungainly looking, but um, these came into the country very reasonably for surplus prices, and that has definitely changed over the past couple of years. These have really risen in value. And that's the thing about all these pistols. Uh, the CZ 82 and 83 was coming into the country uh, in crates. And at that time, you know, you could pick up a, a CZ 82 for, you know, around $250 to $300. Uh, those prices are long gone. These are going up to 350 to 400 And that's just bringing it up to the value of the firearm. One of the things about surplus firearms when they come into the country is they're bringing them in in volume, so the prices are typically lower. And that's the time to buy it. But you can see a, the difference between the Takarov and the Makarov ammunition. This was used by the Takarov pistols. And of course, the Czechs always do something different, and that's why they went with the Model 52. Then when it goes to the Model 82, the Russians were using the Makarov. And single stack is a double single action pistol, but the CZ-82 definitely has it beat in a lot of areas. And this is a Bulgarian Makarov, and it's just like the Soviet counterpart of the Russian counterpart. And these have been very popular uh, coming into the country very reasonably at first. Again, the price has risen. But the Model 82 is actually more in line with the Walther PP. Uh, and this is in 32 ACP, which obviously comes in 380 ACP as well. Uh, but a lot of the same designs. Uh, this is a blowback action. Uh, they disassemble very similarly as well. Uh, but with the blowback action, it kind of comes back a little bit more aggressively than your Browning linkless design. But these guns are really flat to shoot, even in the 9mm Makarov, which is more powerful than your 380. Here we have 380 ACP on the left, and we have 9mm Makarov on the right. Uh, the 9mm Makarov bullet diameter is .365. With the 380 ACP, it's .355. So there's just a small incremental difference between the two. One thing you'll also notice is the bullet on the Makarov is more flat-nosed. Uh, the 38 ACP seems to come up just a little bit. This may give you a little bit more of a look. It's a little bit wider, but a little bit flatter. We want to put these through the chronograph, considering they're the same bullet weight, just see what we get. The 380 ACP averaged 1,020 feet per second, and this was using Fiocchi. The 9mm Makarov averaged 1,060 feet per second, so you have about 40 feet per second more. Equal bullet weight, and so you're going to get pretty much a lot of the same ballistics, just a little more velocity out of the Makarov. But guys, you can tell it in your hand. It may only be 40 feet per second increase, but it's definitely more felt recoil. And here we have a standard 9mm Parabellum, uh, 115 grain bullet compared to 95 grains, and it's going about 1,100 feet per second, and those are standard target loads. You can get plus P rounds and get some self-defense loads that'll be a lot greater than that. But that more compares to the full metal jacket bullet we've got in both of these. Also, we have the Takarov here, 85 grain bullet, but it's going 1,230 feet per second. In fact, it'll even get up to 1,580 feet per second in some military loads. So you have less bullet weight, but you have definitely more velocity, considerably more. Now the CZ-82 and 83 are double single action. And that means when the first shot is fired, when you pull the trigger with the hammer down, it actuates the hammer 
and then it fires. It's a long trigger pull. But subsequent shots, the hammer will be in the rear position. And so as we come up, and man, that's a short reset. Bring it back down, and then subsequent shots, the hammer will be in the rear position. Typically, you're gonna carry it just like it is with one in the chamber and a magazine. If you wanna carry it with the hammer back, you can carry it cocked and locked. And then drop the safety, and then a nice shorter trigger pull. But honestly, I would recommend carrying this double action because it gives you a safety factor. But at the time, this was a really nice double stack magazine, had a lot of capacity, still a very compact size, not compared to the new pistols of today, but still a very small pistol to be able to carry by officers or for that matter, concealed carry. Very similar in size to the Beretta Model 84, and this is the Cheetah. These are great little guns. Of course, they have the open slide design, and this is a Beretta but a lot of the same kind of features. This one is in 32 ACP as well, but guys, they've gotten these small little pistols down to where these have really gone to the wayside compared to a lot of the smaller frame pistols that we have. Now we have our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Check the double action trigger pull. Nine pounds, 3.2 ounces. Single action, really short, really easy. Four pounds, 3.2 ounces. CZ82, one pound, 11.8 ounces. CZ83, one pound, 12 ounces. Pretty much the same. The CZ52, two pounds, 1.2 ounces. You know the Czech soldiers were really glad when this was issued. This is a beast, but I still love shooting it, man. It's like a rocket launcher. We appreciate Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA. One of the largest suppliers of ammo in the country. And not only the 380 ACP, but also the 9x18 Makarov. Now while these pistols look identical, and really have identical features all throughout, uh, they shoot differently. Uh, with a 380 ACP, it's a very soft shooting gun. It's a very heavy gun with it being all steel. So it's a real pleasure to shoot. Very little recoil, very little muzzle flip. When you bring out the CZ82, uh, it has considerable more power. You can feel it in the web of your hand. What's funny is it doesn't have a lot more muzzle flip, but the blowback action really shows itself with the 9x18 Makarov caliber. It's a pretty hot little round. In fact, a lot of people use it for self-defense. But because it comes right back in your hand, it really can get back on target quicker. Uh, I found that shooting the 380 ACP was a lot of fun. It was really a joy to shoot. No discomfort with the Makarov uh, and the 82. It definitely has more punch into the web of your hand. But it's really not that uncomfortable. You can just tell the difference between the two. But the 9x18 Makarov caliber is definitely a better man stopper. All right, what do you think about the difference? 380. Um, they feel pretty similar as far as like where they keep their um, the nose. But I will say that this one kicks back into my hand much more than this one does. Yeah, it's more just in the hand. It's not as much yeah, of a flip. Yeah, it's not. The flip is really not even noticeable between the two. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because it stays flat when you're shooting it. Yeah, even with the stronger kick, it still stayed very flat. But it's a pretty significant difference, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. It definitely kicked me right in between the thumb and the um, index finger. Right. Now for disassembly, these are exact copies of each other as far as disassembly goes. And so we're just going to disassemble the Model 82. We're going to drop our magazine, make sure the gun's unloaded. Now this is a blowback action, so it breaks down a little bit differently. Here with the trigger guard, we're going to bring this down. It's pretty stiff. There we go. 
it just pops down low. Now with a lot of the uh, Walther's, you actually pull the trigger guard down and you can hook it to the side of the frame, but we can leave it in this position. Next, you're gonna wanna just bring back your slide, lift up, and it comes right off. It's got a recoil spring and it fits over the barrel. You have a fixed barrel and this is a blowback design, which inherently gives you better accuracy. It's more stable with the frame. Of course, it's a very simple design and to be honest, when you have just the frame, it almost feels like it's aluminum. It's not really that heavy. You see the plastic grips coming down, but pretty much this is what you get. The barrel stays pinned to the receiver. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip and to clean. For reassembly, we're gonna put on our spring, bring it back into the slide, get it past those rails, and then it drops just like that. If the trigger guard is not put into place, the magazine will not reinsert. So you're not gonna inadvertently shoot this with the trigger guard down, which would not be a good thing. One thing you wanna do though is make sure you just push it and you hear that snap. And we're back in business. And again, the 83 is exactly the same kind of disassembly. Now when it comes to the 82 and the 83, uh, they're both excellent firearms. They're CZ quality. They were way ahead of their time. Uh, you know, double stack magazine, double single action, even though blowback design, but ambidextrous features and a compact small pistol again for that era, especially for a military sidearm. I mean, it's one of those that's just going to be very durable. Definitely a much better replacement to the CZ-52. And while the Makarov is a great pistol, uh, you know, with a double stack magazine and just better quality features. But then in that CZ-75 line, you have the Rami, which is their subcompact 10 plus one, nine millimeter. And guys, a little thicker, maybe just a little smaller in length, a little smaller in grip, but 10 plus one versus 12 or 13 plus one. Yet you're getting a more power out of the Rami, but weighs a lot more. And honestly, while the Rami is one of my favorites and I love it, but the grace and just the beauty of these CZ-75 82 and 83s. I mean, they're just gorgeous guns. The CZ-82 or the CZ-83, which one to me is the better choice? Uh, the CZ-82 is, is 9x18 Makarov. It's a very proven round. It's excellent. Because this is a military firearm, and specifically because of the barrel, uh, being chrome-lined and having polygonal grooves, it's going to give it a very strong, accurate feel to it. I think a little stronger barrel than you're going to get with your commercial version. Other than that, there's not really a lot of differences, except caliber. Now, you can get the 83 in the Makarov caliber, uh, but, of course, 380 is pretty much what you're going to find, and if you want to go with 32. Uh, one of the things about caliber, I would suggest the 380 ACP is going to be easier to find. It's not necessarily going to be cheaper because there's a quite a bit of Makarov ammunition out there, even steel cased ammunition. And so while there is quite a bit of Makarov ammo out there, I think that this 380 ACP is going to be more plentiful if you just happen to walk into a standard gun shop. Uh, prices may be a little more expensive. Uh, you're going to have a lot more choices with 380, especially with self defense ammo, different type hollow points. Uh, there are hollow point options for your Makarov, but it's not as extensive. So I think overall, the biggest plus would be with the 380 is that you can walk into any gun shop in normal times <laughs> and be able to find 380 ACP where you may not be able to find the Makarov ammunition. The, the Makarov is going to give you a little bit better self-defense capability. Around 40 to 50 feet per second faster. And then, of course, there's different loads there even. But you can get some hotter rounds for the 380 ACP that could bring it up at least a little bit closer to the Makarov. But honestly, they're so close in so many features, and even in caliber, that either one would be an excellent choice. So guys, both of these were coming in on the surplus market pretty reasonably, but since that time, it's dried up. And that's one of the things about surplus firearms. When you start seeing a bunch come into the country and the prices are low, it's the best time to buy. Because once those supplies dry up, the prices go up. Uh, you can still find them, but obviously they're not quite as readily available. 
but you can still find them here and there. There are small lots that come in on occasion. And again, check out AIM Surplus. We really appreciate them sending these. These are pretty compact, but to modern standards, these are pretty heavy, full, all steel pistols. And we've gotten that size down very small, especially with the polymer frame striker fire pistols. But yet, this is still a great gun to carry, and many do. But it's really one of those relics from the Eastern Bloc, and yet it still has a lot of validity today for self-defense. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market, and you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Czechoslovakia designed the 1982 in 9x18 Makarov. Okay, I don't like that. And then when the Czech Republic started from 92 to, yeah. You know those Czech soldiers, really fine checkering? Oh. And here we have the CZ75 Rami. It's in 10 millimeter. It's not in 10 millimeter. <laughs> You'll be in single action with the hammer reversed reversed. It won't be reversed, but it's going to be back. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful! I know. Should go on the road with that. That's all, folks.